Vigil is the greatest spy ever and she is a gadget for every situation, or at least that's how she is in the lore. In this video we're going to be looking at Vigil's strengths and weaknesses, go over her kit and showcase two different Vigil builds, the initial build that everyone must use and my personal preferred build. While I may not be the world's number one Vigil, this guide should be more than enough for you to hit the ground running. Alright, let's start it up. While classes aren't really a thing in Deceive, Vigil is identified as a vanguard, which is supposed to be well-rounded and reliant fighters who can get out of any situation. And Vigil kind of fits that. She kind of fits this role as a character having a lot of variety. A lot of her weapons feel rather different. Her expertise is still three rather different things. And again, her passive three rather different things. So I think with the amount of variety she has, she becomes a vanguard and can kind of get out of any situation with proper planning. But she does play a bit differently than our other vanguards, Chavez and Squire. In Deceive, unlocks are locked behind the class progression system. As you play more with Vigil, you'll gain mastery points and mastery levels. At mastery levels 2, 6, and 10, you'll gain cosmetic rewards. At level 3, the second passive. 4, the second expertise. 5, the second weapon. 7, the final passive. 8, the final expertise. And 9, the final weapon. Once you complete the 10 mastery levels, you move on to the long-term progression system known as Echelons. There is 100 Echelon levels, and it's estimated to take somewhere between four and 600 gameplay hours to complete this track. There's a lot of rewards along the way, most notably at levels 10, 50, and 100, there's a unique costume for Vigil, and at level 30, a unique uh, ink. Along the way, about every single level, you will get the premium currency bonds. Let's start by talking about Vigil's weapons. Vigil's weapons kind of pay homages to other agents, so we'll kind of mention them, but it's not really a main point. So this is the Cali Burn, Vigil's weapon one, which a lot of people relate back to Red's weapon one. As a full auto weapon, it does similar damage and is just kind of a similar weapon. So eight damage to the body, 11 to the head, um, is a pretty good rate at a 7.0 fire rate, which I think is even faster than Red's Weapon 1, so you're doing a lot of damage really quickly. You may notice the mag size here is 152, and that is not wrong. It is a mag of 152. This weapon uses an overheat system. So after you shoot 20 shots, or as you're shooting the first 20 shots, you're, there's a heat bar that does go up. It doesn't appear in this video, which is kind of annoying, but we'll see it in our showcases. Um, so the heat bar goes up, and once you fire 20 shots, that heat bar maxes out, and then she quote-unquote reloads slash cools down the weapon for two seconds before you can fire again. Now, this is actually better than a traditional reload because if you only fire 19 shots, the amount of time the heat takes to dissipate is actually less than two seconds. So as long as you are practicing and being careful with this weapon, you really get a lot smaller windows where uh, other agents may be reloading. Uh, other things you can do is instead of... Uh, once you fire that 19th bullet, not the 20th, you can switch to your expertise or a gadget or something, and it will cool down while you're doing something else. Notably, though, if you do fire that 20 bullets and Vigil starts that cool down animation, you are locked into that and you won't be able to switch to a gadget or an expertise. So it's really important with this gun to practice your timing and try to only fire 19 bullets and then take a little bit of a break so that you don't overheat the weapon. A reload of two seconds isn't all that long, and 20 shots at eight damage a shot at seven shots per second is really a lot. So even if you do hit it, the person's mostly or probably dead. Um, unfortunately, during that cooldown, another thing you can't do is melee, so you may be trying to finish them off with a quick melee, but you are locked into that, which is another reason I think it's really important to just get uh, your timing, your internal muscle memory really good at stop shooting just before we uh, overheat the weapon. I think this weapon's probably Vigil's best. It's really consistent, and if you can get that timing down, it's like you, there's no reload, you have a huge mag, and there's just a lot you can do with this one. So I think it's really comfortable. There's probably some competition for best Vigil weapon, but I think the comfort level this one provides is gonna make it my pick for best. Naturally, we'll see this in the initial build and with something else in the preferred, even though I do actually really like playing with this weapon. 
All right, now let's push on to the Galantine. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, this, a lot of people say, and it very clearly kind of is uh, a Squire weapon too, which is also a three round burst pistol. This one again is like a slightly buffed version of that. Uh, it does slightly more damage at 10 per body um, and on 13 to the head, which is actually the same as Squire's weapon too. Uh, 18 mag side, long reload of 2.2. And as all burst weapons, the fire rate there is bugged. So it's not actually nine shots per second. Um, so this one's pretty good. It's also better than Squire's weapon do in another way. The fall off is five meters longer. Uh, Squire's weapon do has a really short fall off of only 10 meters. Uh, this one has 15, so you get another five meters and then uh, at the 25 meter mark you've lost half of your damage but mostly you just take fights in those 15 meter range this one's really good just because of the consistent damage output and it's kind of a traditional reload there's nothing wrong with this gun i think personally it doesn't like mesh with my play style very well and it does kind of fill a similar role to the cali burn um as they both fire fairly quick and do low-ish damage but I think there's some debate as to whether this might be the best one, but I might also say that about the third one. Um, I think I don't vibe with this one so well, so I rated a little lower, so I'm trying to fight some of my own biases with this. Um, because I think it's better than I personally give it credit for. Long reload is a downside, but 18 shots at 10 per shot is more than enough to get a kill, so hopefully you don't have to reload, and this is a traditional reload, so you can always pop your expertise or your gadgets uh, and then come back to reloading. And moving on finally to the Erendite, um, this is kind of like Chavez's Duke. <laughs> um, it's a really slow firing high damage pistol, 35 to the uh, body, so it's slightly less damage than Chavez's Duke. Uh, 60 damage to the head, that's actually the same as Chavez's Duke. One less shot, um, five long reload, 2.2, slow rate of fire. Uh, very comparable. This one I like just because the hard hitting slow pistol, I think gives you a lot to work with. Um, especially on Vigil, you have all this downtime between shots, and that gives you time to use a gadget or your expertise between shots. Um, so I kind of like that having that downtime, and I think it creates some interesting windows. We'll talk a little more about with the expertise. This is going to show up in my preferred build, because I do like to use this one more than the Galantine. Um, so we'll see that but it's very similar to chavez's duke and i think that's a fair comparison slightly less damage the 35 is a bit of a uh, problem point compared to like a, a, a the 40 per shot that chavez's has because 40 per shot for three shots is going to put you over 120 versus the 35 isn't quite going to get you there um so it's possible someone survives three body shots but i think again you have some expertises and stuff that can make up for that Speaking of those expertises, let's go right there right now. The first one is the smoke launcher. So let's talk about the expertises in general first. So all of her, uh, all of Vigil's expertises are equipping other weapons functionally. So uh, you switch to another weapon and they have various ammo counts. Uh, the smoke launcher here has three smoke grenades you can fire. And then the cooldown of your expertise actually depends on how much ammo is left. So if you only use one of the three shots, you will, and you switch back to your main weapon you keep 66 percent of that cooldown interesting thing to know is that just because you have quote unquote two shots left you can't actually switch back to your expertise weapon i'll call it until it's back to 100 percent because it is an expertise so it, you can only use it once it's full so it not using shots turns into cooldown reduction not saving shots you can use later uh, if that kind of makes sense and again we'll see that in uh, the showcases. So this smoke launcher, you throw up to three smoke grenades um, and on impact, they make these smoke clouds. You can see them form there. They're fairly large um, and any rivals are going to get traced while they're in those smoke clouds. So you can see them and then the smoke is thick enough that they can't see you. It kind of makes a one-sided fight. This one is kind of not good, unfortunately. It seems like it should be great, but it has some issues. And if you watch this video, look how long it takes for the smoke to be thick enough that you're actually getting an advantage over your opponent. Like, how long is... Uh, can you still see Squire clearly without using the trace? Is how long they can see you... Um, 
So it just takes a long time to get the advantage of this. Now landing these grenades does do five damage, which isn't nothing, but it is investing a lot of time for at most 15 damage. Now this is something you could be doing while your weapon one is cooling down as long as you didn't full overheat it. Or if you're using the weapon three, you can probably shoot someone, pop a quick smoke grenade and switch back to your weapon three you, uh, with very little downtime, if any at all. But I think just this takes so long to form smoke clouds that in solos, I don't think it's worth it. The fight is mostly decided by then and you might be able to get away or something or finish the fight. Um, but uh, I don't think you're getting that much an advantage. In teams though, while you are not necessarily the focus, if they're focusing someone else, that smoke collecting can be much more valuable, um, seeing as there's a lot more targets, a lot more bullets flying other directions and a lot more chaos in team modes. This one can be more useful in those modes for sure. Um, but still, I think the main problem with the smoke launcher is just how long the smoke takes to actually collect and give you that advantage. And of course, at the end of the, they could always just leave the smoke, which breaks your trace. And now you're kind of on the boat, either side of a smoke wall, you can't see them and they can't see you. So. Um, they don't get traced once they're out of that smoke. So if they do just leave it, uh, you are you do just have to run through it. So <laughs> to find them again. So I don't personally take this one. I don't like it too much, but it can certainly be fun in teams. And if you can use it correctly, I think it does give you some advantage. Uh, and we'll see in the showcase. Actually, I think this one comes out kind of huge um, in our showcase here. So. Uh, yeah, those are my thoughts, and we'll see much more of it in our showcase. Let's move on to the Sparks Discharger. Again, it's a weapon swap. You get eight electric bullets. Um, so again, if you only fire like one, you get seven eighths of the cooldown, uh, but you still have to wait for 100% cooldown before you can pull this back out. Um, the electric bullets do five damage, and they do get slowed. Now, each hit doesn't add more slow. There's only slowed or not there's no like more slow more slow more slow they are just slowed or not slowed but it does add to the amount of time they are slowed so if you hit them with all eight they are slowed for a very long time um each shot increasing that time by about three seconds so eight and three is 24 seconds of slow the fight's probably over by them in solos and in <laughs> duos and trios probably as well um this one's pretty good. I don't think you're really ever using all eight of these bullets unless you're maybe trying to get away and you just need to slow them forever. Uh, but again, with the weapon one, uh, having that cooldown you have to manage and the weapon three with that uh, sort of gap in between shots so you can use an expertise, I think this is a good time to switch to this and pop them with three or four of these electric bullets, uh, especially with the weapon three being more of a precision weapon that slow can definitely help you land that powerful headshot or just body shots. So this one I think is my favorite. Um, I think it's much more valuable in combat and stuff than the smoke launcher. And we'll see this tactical GCG we'll move on to next isn't really a combat expertise. This one has a single shot. So you either use it or you don't. You get full cooldown if you put it away or you get uh, it goes on full cooldown if you use it. It goes on no cooldown if you just put it away. It's similar to a bounce pad but not quite it basically shoots you backwards it does do five damage you can technically kill someone with it um it does just fling you backwards you can throw yourself upwards and it's similar to a bounce pad but different this one has a lot of one directional so if you launch yourself up you go a lot up but there's not a lot of horizontal control in that case and vice versa if you launch yourself horizontally there's i mean there's not really any vertical control anyway so where a bounce pad you kind of have some horizontal control and you can like do nice <laughs> graceful jumps almost this one you can't <laughs> if you kind of miss you can't fix it so it's pretty good you can stop fall damage with this but it's a little tricky to do because it's, uh, I believe you don't launch yourself like back up, which is kind of what you'd expect to do. You kind of launch yourself horizontally to basically change your momentum um, from a from a fall to a to a slide. Um, so 
yeah, it's a little tricky and like I recommend you practice it before you do it and it potentially take 60 damage. This one's good just for like making space and getting away. Notably, it bounces you back and not your opponent back or anything. Um, but definitely if you like get up close and personal with a Hans or someone you really don't want to be, you can get yourself out of there. The movement option is good if you can do it well, so... Uh, we're not going to see this one in our preferred. We're going to use the Spokes Discharger because I think it's just better and a little bit more fun for me. But this one does have some certain uh, fun vibes and just kind of good movement option. All right, let's move on to the passives. And passive gets some air quotes here. Um, Vigil is kind of... Vigil's passives specifically are a bit of a meme because they're not really passive. And we'll talk about that. So all three of her passives are little... We'll call them little gadgets. They're not gadgets the same way gadgets are gadgets. But they're little pocket gadgets. Um, so what you do is you aim down the site and you press your melee key. And you throw out whatever your pocket gadget passive is. Which makes it functionally not a melee because you have to... Are functionally not a passive because you are quite literally inputting a thing unpassively but once you've thrown it out then there's a passive effect coming off of that little pocket gadget so there's three varieties the first one's pocket sonar it sticks to people this is where the bugged debuff comes in the bugged debuff i'm not going to bring up on your screen there's no point it just means there's something stuck to you like it only if it's only these passives and the di gadget uh, can give someone bugged, and all that debuff does is tell someone there's something stuck to you. <laughs> so, not that big a deal. Um, and pretty much, it's a sonar. It'll give, uh, it'll give little pulses, and just like we see there, it will show uh, any NPC in the area uh, every time it pulses. But if there's an out of cover enemy, it will trace them while they're in the range. So the passive is not something you can use infinitely. You have one out at a time and it has a timer. And then once it uh, breaks, it makes a little explosion noise, similar to a gadget breaking. Uh, there is a little bit of a time. There's a bar uh, that we'll see uh, before you can throw a second one. So this is actually really good and kind of my favorite. It, it's it's a 50-50 for me, but, uh, but this one can be really good to like throw on purple rooms and you can see if someone's in that room who's not supposed to be. Uh, for example, a lot of players will just be a blue guard in the purple room because oftentimes there's no reason to be a purple guard or a VIP in a purple room. And you can kind of catch people that way even if they're not traced. Uh, if you get in a fight with a Larson, you can either throw the bug thing on them before they poof, or when they poof, you can throw this in like a direction you thought they were going. It has a fairly long range, as long as they don't get covered back while they're invisible. Uh, once they're visible again, they'll get this trace on them, and you can go hunt them down. So there's some things that way, and I like to use this for the information like that, and that's why it's my favorite. But it's definitely kind of, these ones are definitely personal preference, if you kind of remember to use them at all. Um, I'm not sure in either of our showcases if I'll remember to hit the buttons, but I will do my best here. And let's push on to the proximity mine. So the proximity mine, same thing. You have to aim down the site and hit your melee button. Um, you can stick it to someone and it does an AOE explosion. It doesn't say how much damage it does, so I'm here to tell you it does 10. 1, 0, 10. Not that much. Um, in solos, obviously, that's going to be 10 damage potentially in trios uh, you can do 30 damage if everyone's close enough to the mine or more I suppose if you have two teams but that's unlikely to happen but it's pretty much you throw it down and when an out of cover revival comes by it explodes does 10 damage it's not great but it does change some breakpoints this one has a bit of a long cooldown so you're basically using it to like lead a fight or maybe once in a fight um, you're gonna throw this out I find the input a little awkward, so oftentimes I don't really use it in a fight, but it's a decent lead where if you know someone's an, N or it's an NPC as a player, you can literally stick the mine to them, and then your first shot is going to do a bonus 10 damage to them. And again, in duos or trios, that explosion is going to knock other people out of cover, so you might find a whole team that way, you might not. This one's good. It does have one little thing we should talk about. If you stick the mine to someone, 
and you shoot specifically the mine, you will break it and not do any damage to them. <laughs> so once you've stuck the mine to someone, be a little bit more careful with your aim just to not accidentally shoot the mine you just placed on them because you'll just remove it. Um, so kind of like to shout that one out. This one's fine. 10 damage isn't a lot in solos, but it's 10 damage. 10 damage is 10 damage. We talked about uh, the weapon three uh, maxing out at like 105. 10 more damage puts that into kill range for all HP chips. So could be good. Um, the EMF jammer actually just got changed in buff. So I haven't actually used it, but the buff sounded really strong. So it might take my spot for favorite. But basically you throw a jammer and it works like the signal scrambler does, but only on Intel. It doesn't work on other gadgets. Um, so it prevents people from hacking anything. <laughs> Intel sources, devices, and doors. I think the main use here is doors. Um, and then other people can't open those doors. So if you get into a purple room, you can lock it behind you. It lasts for a little bit of time. I don't think long enough you can like hack a whole purple room. Um, and it does have a bit of a cooldown, so there is this window once it breaks for you to, for where someone could come in before you can throw a second one. It, there's not a hundred percent uptime. It also keeps out NPCs, so if you, you know, if you slipped past an elite guard into a purple room and you're in the wrong outfit, you can lock that door and keep them out. If you're being chased, door closed behind you, you can lock it. There's some use here, and I think it could be good. But I haven't played around with it enough to know. Previously, before the buff, it wasn't good, but that's because it didn't lock out NPCs. So uh, that was bad because NPCs just open the door and let your uh, people you were trying to lock the lock out in. Um, so that's not happening anymore. It will lock out the NPCs, and that buff might be enough to make it quite good. Um, but I haven't played around with it to see. But I think it will be. Um, that is Vigil's whole kit there. While no gadget is necessarily character specific, I'll try to pick out a couple vigil combos. As a vanguard, I don't think she needs a lot. There's not a ton of combos here, but we'll try to pick out some little things. Uh, tripwires here, since we do have that sonar on our passive one, on uh, tracing on out of cover rivals, this will knock rivals out of cover. Um, and you can then get a trace on them that way. Maybe kind of niche because if they're breaking your tripwire and you're close enough to get that trace, you might have just been better off shooting them. Um, but I mean, there's no harm in throwing <laughs> the, your sonar to get a trace. Um, I'll be honest, I looked at the rest of these. That's kind of it. Uh, I think there's a couple combos that could be good if the smoke bomb was better. So I'm going to talk about those a little bit. Uh, the turret having a turret also shooting in the smoke might make it harder for them to shoot back at you in the smoke but the amount of time it takes to deploy smoke and deploy a turret is probably just too much for that combo to really work goo pods are sort of similar someone slowed and traced in some smoke and they can't really shoot back because they can't see you it's kind of a one fight but it takes so long for the smoke to come out and then you still have to throw goo pods on top of that seems like a lot of investment but maybe if you have some teammates, uh, those might work out. I think really that's the only specific things I can call out. And I, yeah, <laughs> I think as a Vanguard, that's not overly surprising. Let's talk field upgrades. We're using our uh, base build here as we always do in these guides. I don't think Vigil needs a lot of expertise cooldown. Uh, maybe with her expertise three, where you either use all or you use none. But both the smoke and the uh, spikes discharger, you get a lot of that cooldown back. I find with the spikes discharger, I almost never use all eight shots. It's probably four. So you like always get half the cooldown back. So I don't find I need this too much. Um, so I think if you're using Expertise 3, you're going to want some, especially if you're using it as getaway. Maybe you're not taking a bounce pad. So it's your bounce pad replacement. Um, you might want a high Expertise cooldown. Uh, we'll be doing our showcase in solos, so I do like to call out that I don't really like ammo pouch in solos. Um, in Vigil, I think fits that. There's just, whenever you kill someone in solo, you pick up their spy pack, you get a bunch of ammo that they would have been carrying around. Uh, along with the ammo on the map, you don't have to share with anybody, so there's just kind of more ammo. 
versus in team games where that spy pack you may not always be the person picking it up you have to share all that ammo you find i think ammo pouch is much more valuable in those but in solos i don't like taking it um there's not a ton of chips here that combo super well i like to always call it cover accelerator is generally good and i think vigil uh is fine with that as well uh, again if you like smoke someone that can't see you and you pop back in the cover you might get some advantage there but nothing specifically comboing and we do like to call out Exfiltration Scanner as being just generally not a good chip and you shouldn't really be taking it on any of your builds. And finally, before we get into showcase, let's quickly go over the build we will be using. Obviously, the initial build is going to be our 1, 1, and 1 build. And for our preferred build, I'm going to use the Erendite, the Weapon 3 here, because I do like that slow fire hard hitting. Uh, the Sparks Discharge, I like to combo with that because the slow can help you land some shots. And I think we're going to use the mine. I'm going to try to remember to hit it, but we might not. The inputs are a little weird and uh, we'll try our best, but plus 10 damage isn't a ton and I tend to forget to hit it. So you may not even realize I have a passive, but I will try my best to show off the passives as well. And I will see you right there in one second in our showcase. All right, hard sell in the morning for our initial vigil build here. This build's pretty good. The... Uh, Hi, I'll take that. Time to learn all sorts of dirty secrets. The uh, the passive, as it is, quote unquote passive. Uh, I thought I thought that uh, staff member opened that door. i been like, what the heck? Uh, the passive, as it were, is pretty good, and the weapon's pretty good. I think it's just the smoke launcher, if anything's holding us back a bit. Uh, I'm gonna guess that this guard walks all the way through. Yeah, it looks like it, and hopefully there's seven more intel this way. Yeah, there wasn't even one there we can grab. Let's see about this. Oop. There's a key card in here, so even if we don't get enough, I will actually get free entry back in if I could not sit down. Come on. <laughs> Some of these uh, pop-ups are a little close together. That's five. Three more. There's two. And that's not one more. A little XP's good. One more. There's got to be one more somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that's not one. Come on. Uh oh. One, one more. And he didn't open it. There's got to be one we can get from here, right? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Not bad overall. This gun did just get some buffs. I'm not sure if we said that in our guide portion no this, this isn't great because as i said the, well the smoke launcher is not my favorite of vigil's expertise so just having more of them isn't going to be all that good but uh the key card we get with it is going to be very helpful they did buff the smoke launcher a little though so it might be better than i think now grab this grab this um Grab a bunch of intel up here, and we'll try to get our blue because that's our health chip. Intel gathered. Yeah, we got six. I should be opening some of these drawers, but in the interest of speed and such. Is this a phone? This looks wonky, whatever it is. This is super not related, but hey, <laughs> just got really distracted. And in we go. Um, grab this five with our spyglass. And terminal not done by us. Got this one as well. Her eyes peeled. That is a player. We saw this hollow crumb like right at the last second. I mean, the Doug also just kind of turned and walked towards us. Um, oh, I shouldn't. Have, I should have thrown it that way. That was dumb. That's our passive going off there, but it only traces out of cover spies, so I should have thrown it a little closer to where I thought the thing was coming from. You stopped super weirdly, and I bet you're a player. No? Like, they didn't come in when I came in. I kind of thought they would if they were a player. I'm going to sit for a moment just in case. Um... I'm not seeing anyone in there. I think that might be them. Yeah, 
And we run around one more time. There we go. This isn't going to get us a cover back because we're in their thing, but we can just run in here. You have wasted your time. You won't notice before my cover comes back, and then we're good. All right, that one's already gone. So we were right. That was a player the whole time. I don't have my green. I'm just sitting for no reason. And I think that was a valuable use of expertise, which I'm a little surprised we actually got. I'm not going to lie. Uh, we have that key card. Let's get our green so I can heal. But uh, Yumi with the turret and the heal bubble there. We took out the heal bubble. Where's the green safe? There it is. We took out the heal bubble to stop her from healing because we weren't doing a ton of damage. And then we got to play with the terrain to make sure that uh, we were winning that fight. Okay. All in all, not bad. Uh, healing, that's what I came in here for. Missing a little HP. So we did a E, we did D, now we just go to C, and we're just running the alphabet backwards at this point. Trying to just make sure our aim is on. We didn't use our weapon that well in that fight. Um, we overheated it, I think, twice, which shouldn't be doing at all. But uh, that's just a practice thing, and I am out of practice with it. Okay, this is probably gone just based on how much stuff is gone. We're going to walk on through here. Is this a key card? Yeah. Well, no one took it, which is weird. I'm going to walk in here because we are an elite guard, so if I do it good enough, that shouldn't trigger anyone. And they didn't follow me. Nice work. Vault I thought I heard out. the door again. <laughs> okay, and this is our hack speed. And not the last vault terminal. We'll probably just have to race around to B and A and get that. Since we have full build... The best thing we can do for ourselves right now is just get the get the next phase of the game going. Let's see here. Yeah, that's the one we just did. We could also we should have thrown this in advance to see if anyone's in there. I'm not using my passive very well. I think you should mostly be. Uh... Nope. Hang on, someone's coming in. I didn't open that. Cool down our weapon. Oh, we're gonna die. I gotta move because the turret, but we do have trace. Yeah, the trace comes in. All right. I said bad things about the uh, <laughs> the smoke launcher, and it's kind of secured us two kills. So, uh, not. I, I can't say any more bad things about it. That might have been a player that we saw. Uh, we saw a hat amp or a smack on the door there. Or did. Doug just go in there? Doug did just go in there. Hold the phone. I mean, eventually we break the shield, right? We have a gun that never needs to reload. Except for when I do that. Hiya! Oh, that would have been a much cooler kill. <laughs> oh, if I had actually got the kill on the first punch, it would have been so much cooler. All right, well, I mean, there's not a ton to say. We, I, I, I thought the passive was going to be useful and the smoke not useful, and it was the total opposite. But I think that just goes to show that I was wrong. Um, the smokes came in way more handy than I expected, and the passive I didn't use as much. I think if I used it more, we could have like used it to see into purple rooms and stuff. Um, to see the actually, I should shout this out. One of the best uses of the passive is to put it on like the purple room walls to see if a normal guard is in that purple room since they look different. I mean, the dugs are a little hard to tell, but if you see a hat amber and you know, they're not supposed to be in there, that's going to be a player. So I think that's a really good use of it along with just like using it to hunt Larsons and stuff can be good uh, since, well, it doesn't trace them while they're poofed. Normally the range is enough that uh, they'll get caught in it when they unpoof. But that was a really good showcase for the weapon and the smoke. So we're going to move on to a preferred build and I will see you right there. All right, we got our gold outfit on. Hard sell in the morning for our preferred vigil. We got the big weapon three with my favorite crosshair or favorite uh, scope of the whole game, actually. Oh, all right. 
Good to get those little hiccups out of the way early. Spawned right by D with six intel. Acquired. Game almost plays itself from here. Got our spikes launcher going. We'll grab this two intel. intel gathered. Oh, there's a Sasoi above our head. If I think we're gonna run out to that fight, which might be too little too late. Good coverage. No. All right. What the? I didn't want to punch there at all. Thank you, Vigil. There we go. We got the headshot at least. Oh boy. I don't know if we slowed him enough. I can't hit a red target on a red carpet, apparently. Oh, the other headshot. See ya. No ammo, no problem. <laughs> if you're a player, I'm going to be so mad. We're going to be killing people with our uh, expertise and our, uh, our, <laughs> our bomb if, uh, if you're a player. Now, I should definitely not be doing this because it's sus just to be doing anything but getting ammo at this point. And I should head out to D, because we already opened it. Um, but I also just need to find ammo. Alright, I guess we're gonna just go into D and get ammo. I need that dug effort. I'm woefully underprepared for... Hello? Oh, that's my bounce pad. Thanks! <laughs> Alright, two really nice headshots. Dug outfit. Ammo over here. It all It's all coming back together. Uh, ammo things here? Yeah. Alright, we can only buy two, though. Because we still need to open this door. But we got ten shots. Should be more than enough, as long as I don't miss as much as I did. That squire blended in with that guy pit really well. Look elsewhere, agent. Stop this guy from scolding me preemptively. Saves time and intel. Great. Grab this. Intel gathered. One of these and okay, now we'll get uh, expertise cooldown, which isn't all that important because the way I use this expertise, we never really use more than like four shots, so it always goes on like half cooldown. But that half cooldown will be even quicker. I opened all of this already, didn't I? Yep. If I could build back up to five for my HP chip, that would be really good. I also got to remember to aim slightly higher. I don't know why I feel, keep kind of aiming at the ground. Intel acquired. Right, we're in the wrong outfit for this. Hopefully it won't matter. I also want that key code because that'll give us both blue and purple. A gift from the agency. How nice. Yoink, yoink. All right, not bad. Now we'll go back to the scene of all of the crime and uh, get a green. Oh, sure, this is the time these doors don't have full ammo in them. So, 20 shots should be enough. Ah, they're following the VIP. Alright, she's opening a drawer in the middle of the room. Nothing wrong with that. No, oh, there was a key code in here the whole time. Social battery and some more intel. more intel need that and there we go no need to gamble when there's only like one item we could get we could get the green key card we don't have but really no loss if we don't get that I'll waste one intel here once intel we collected. go this way one vault terminal left that's not open I'm pretty sus of this. I didn't hear a bounce pad, but... 
vault terminal successfully okay. located. Found the last vault terminal too. And and there we go. That is why you are our favorite. Look really sus in this area. We gotta remember we took basically all the intel and all the food from here. So if we do come out with the package, we'll probably try to prioritize the other side of the map. Ammo. Better be prepared. That's looking weird. All right, <laughs> moving on. The poison would wear off. I could get one of these vials. Useful. I mean, the headshots today have been kind of nuts, and by today I mean this game. That's a soy. Definitely should have shot first. I was a pretty obvious player though, just the guard hanging out by the vault, like as the phase ended. You really just gotta take the shots on those. That's that's my tip. Um, we need. An outfit? There's a printer way over there. I'm gonna go for that one. Unless there's one like right in my face here, and there is. <laughs> Never mind. There's one way back there we saw. Alright. I guess Sasoi's head, because we've, what, headshot two Sasoi's now? And a squire? But uh, Sasoi's head seems to be at my crosshair level. Which is really strong. I recommend that <laughs> if you're playing against the swords. <laughs> oh, there's not a lot of tips to do here. What I should have done actually is thrown a mine on the Sasori we we knew the the one we just fought uh, first because that would have been ten damage. It didn't matter, but it could have. Saves time and intel. Oop. Great. No lag spike shouldn't affect anything. I also I have been running around with two bullets for a long time. Light is green, means no one else is in here. Okay. We should be first, because even though we had a tiny fight at the start, uh, we were still quite quick in finding a printer. Alright, they were an elite guard. Um, that one right there. Continue to pick up ammo. I'm gonna switch because they would have seen us leave. And now we'll scan. Is it just the one? It looks like a Larson, which is a bit concerning. Just because he can steal a package and then get away from us. And we don't have the sonar. Um, I think maybe we just run though. I would take that dugout for it, except for the fact that he's sitting. No one in front of us. Little jump there is kind of a thing, because you can don't, not lose speed if you jump while you do that. Otherwise, you do lose speed. Hey, gorgeous. Come here often. So, the little jump there is just a little tech to not lose speed while you're scanning in these kinds of situations. We're going to ping right here. And I think we've seen a play just like this. Oh, it's a little different this time. He's going to take that damage, but not really know where it came from. And there we go. <laughs> a little execution style for the headshot. He got the heat from shooting a civilian. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a game. We didn't show off the passive, like, at all, but I also feel that Vigil's passives are not why you're playing the character. We showed off the weapon pretty well, and I'll be honest, the, the spark gun, not really. But honestly, I think if you're playing Vigil, it is about the weapon, so <laughs> the four kills, all headshots with the weapon three here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That was that's that's what it is. Uh, we got to do a little outro. Let's go back to the menu here and do our, our not really final thoughts, but this is our vigil build. And uh, if this guide helped you out at all, a subscription really does help me out uh, because it helps me make more of these. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. Uh, comment if you have a lot of vigil tips or there's a couple of these left. Not many. Um, 
So if you have any tips for general guide stuff we could add that we missed, that would be good. And we mostly do gameplay commentary here. So if that's something you're into, I will see you in the next one.